It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today we're going to be reviewing the AJAZ AK873. Now how I got this keyboard is a little bit different. It's a little bit unusual but uh, so you would have seen if you follow the channel that uh, I partook in a review from uh, a keyboard that was provided to me by WhatGeek. Now, uh, as part of the activities that I conducted with WhatGeek, I joined their Discord, and they had this $1 sale event, which, you know, I thought, hey, like for a dollar with free shipping, how could you not get involved? And what happened uh, with that was, I hopped on it and I bought a $1 coiled cable. So that's that's it right there. I haven't actually opened it yet. Uh, I will do another video and review of it. But what happened was as part of that promotion, they had 25 uh, lucky winners who would get a mystery item. So I was one of the 25 lucky winners. I don't know how many people actually jumped on that $1 sale. I don't even know how many items were part of that uh, $1 sale. But in any case, WhatGeek reached out to me and said congratulations and they sent me a package which I had no idea what it was until it turned up and it was this AJAZ keyboard. And then of course they've sort of reached out to me and asked if I could actually do a video review of it, uh, which of course I'm more than happy to anyway. So while this is uh, for YouTube's purposes. I flagged it as a sponsored video because WhatGeek has provided it to me. I technically, in theory, want it. Um, but of course, as everything and anything that I do here anyway, all of the opinions are my own. Okay, so uh, take that however you will. Uh, however it appears to you, obviously that's up to you to decide. So I didn't know anything about this keyboard at all. Uh, you know, obviously it wasn't one that I asked to review or anything like that, so I don't know anything. Uh, and I went on to WhatGeek's website to have a look, and let's just have a look at what it is. So right now, they do have a sale on it. It's about 100 US. Uh, it's a 10 keyless, and it supposedly comes in two different colors. Uh, it is, it's got some options for a green linear or a blue tactile switch in it as well. Uh, it's fairly standard. There's nothing really too outstanding in terms of its look and its design. Uh, you know, the indicator lights, interestingly, are actually down here instead of sort of, uh, you know, on the caps lock key itself or indicator lights above, which is, it's an interesting choice. Uh, there's a stylized shot there and they've got this sort of uh, exploded parts of it so it looks like it does have some sandwich foam already made built into it uh, some bottom foam for that really sort of dampening sound that's very popular at the moment now it does say that it's a magnetic attraction cover so I'm really keen to see what does that mean uh, does that mean you can just take it off with no screws on this so that would be really interesting if it is a, a screwless design on the case uh, PBT die sub keycaps, pretty standard now on a lot of OEM keyboards. Uh, nothing else really too much in that particular picture. So the linear switch, 45 grams, polycarbonate, nothing to crash hot. Uh, palm stem, polycarbonate, shrapnel. I don't really know what they mean by shrapnel there. Uh, I think that's like <laughs> maybe the, the switch contacts? Shrapnel. Shrapnel to me is like metal, is like parts of things that have gone bang and are flying out at rapid speed to hurt people. Uh, yeah, weird terminology there. Maybe, maybe, hey Jazz, you might need to have a look at that. And then there's the tactile. It's a 50 gram tactile, so it's actually been on the lighter side compared to say like a 65 or even a 72 gram type of tactile. Uh, so it looks like it's hot swap. You should be able to pull it out. It's got RGBs on it and much, much the same with just some other pictures. Uh, if we come down and have a quick skim through, TKL has foam. Uh, it's got wired Bluetooth MDA profile. So that's that's really cool. 
uh, MDA profile is a bit of a flatter profile, kind of like a, a more even, thicker, uh, slightly higher DSA type of profile, not so much curvature. So that's that's good. Uh, built in RGB and compatible with Mac and Windows. So there's some software there that you can deal with, which I'm not going to uh, go into at this point in time. Nothing really too crash hot. 1.1 kilos. So that's actually got a good amount of heft in that. So we should get a keyboard, some keycaps, switches, puller, cable, a dongle, and a manual. All right. So let's have a look. Okay, so this is actually the first time I'm recording with my new setup here at the house. Uh, I will have a video that I'll also do just talking about my setup in regards to uh, how it's slightly different to before and what I'm using right now, so you'll be able to check that out later. So here's the box. Um, I haven't actually opened it or done anything with it. I find it's really interesting that it's actually got this NAR codex. I don't know what that means. Uh, like. <laughs> There's no mention of that here about a, a NAR codex, so I'm not quite sure what that means. Nothing on the sides per se. Uh, so the, the label here says white, so I'm expecting that's going to be that white version and not that other one, the Dawn White. So on the back uh, it says it is mist screen switch white. So that's interesting that they say it's mist green, which I guess is the, the AS green switches so that'll be the linear rather than the blue tactile it's definitely got a lot of heft to it okay right so we've got a we've got a poly well a bit of a plastic cover shell it is definitely the white that we were expecting uh, there's the accessories box let's quickly get out some of that Okay, so there's some spare keycaps. There is the spare switches plus the keycap puller. And there is the cable. So the dongle must be uh, in one of... Is the dongle in here? No, that, that is just the switches and the puller. That feels just like the keycaps, the Mac keycaps. So, unless if the dongle is actually embedded with the keyboard, it might be in this little pouch. Okay, no dongle here, but there's the USB-C cable. So let's just uh, prepare ourselves for that and we'll plug into my little extension cable there. Nothing else is left in the box. So let's just pop those back in for now. Okay, so we've got the instruction manual which is stuck to the back. And They've done it lengthways. Um, it's nice that it's got this plastic, but this tacky stuff is not really, like you can see it's sort of tearing a bit here, which is not fantastic, I guess, if you like to keep, look at that. That's, maybe we'll just do that <laughs> instead. And oh, well, there you go. So that's cool that the, uh, the actual dongle has a home for it. I feel, this is not as elegant as the uh, the Corgi one, where it actually sat into the back, only because having that part of the USB-A open uh, is going to attract dust and other things. Having the, the USB-A portion tucked away and protected inside the case is a far better solution, in my opinion. So let's just put that there and move this aside for now. Okay, so a quick skim 
Uh, so there's some English switch indicator, uh, C is uppercase, lowercase, battery indicator, power switch can be charged. There's connection details, which I'm not going to really bother with. So it's function plus pipe key will cycle the different kinds. Uh, and then of course, there's a whole bunch of different backlight type of things as well. So we won't do too much of that testing. And here it is. It is, it's actually really clean. Uh, that, the font actually, I quite like that font. It's quite a clean font. It's not too hefty in any sense. Uh, it's really thin, but it's really crisp. I don't mind it actually. It's got a bit of that sort of retro futuristic kind of feel about it. Uh, so yeah, just trying to get the focus. It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. In terms of the flex test, uh, it's got a little bit of flex and already I can feel it. It is magnetic. Wow. Okay. So if you, I know why they've done it. So they've gone for the, the top case option if you want that look or you take it off and you get the floating style. If, if you like to have floating keycaps uh, because you want the RGB light to shine through, then taking this top piece off allows you to do that. And there's just some magnets that are actually embedded here in the four corners of this case. Yeah, it's just four magnets. Um, that's actually really clever. I, I really like that. Yeah, I really like that. So it's just a bit of, you know, cheap, simple plastic. But if you want to, you know, reduce the light effect, you can snap that on. And if you want to go for your floating keycaps, like it comes off with ease. And of course, obviously it means that this plate though is going to be uh, steel to, to allow that for the magnets. So that's where a lot of that weight comes into play. Now we do have uh, the, the flip up feet. So there's only one set of adjustments available there. Uh, but it means there must be, well, it's top mount, sorry, because you can see the screws that are just uh, hiding there on the plate. So you should be able to unscrew that and that whole top is going to come off. Now I'm going to put that back on simply because I, I prefer that. I'm not really a, a floating kind of uh, user. That's quite a, a reasonable, comfortable angle there. Now, I do have a different microphone set up that we'll switch to using uh, soon to do the actual sound test. But in terms of the feel of these linears, they're pretty smooth. I would suspect that they're going to be factory lubed. Uh, no real issue with them at all. Reasonable weight. I'd probably prefer a little bit heavier personally, but you know, 45 grams is midline light, right? For, for a lot of what people would be using probably in that 60 gram type of range is quite popular as well. Okay, now, because I've moved a house and uh, a lot of stuff is still in containers and stuff, uh, I actually don't know where my switch, not my switch, um, my keycap cooler is. And I kind of forgot that, so I'm gonna have to use theirs, the one that they give you. Uh, because I actually don't know where mine is right now. So, here we go. So I've given you one of these dual switch puller and keycap puller things. Uh, so let's just take off keycap in the middle. Pop, there we go. And you can sort of see that uh, really flat profile with a little bit of curve on it. Uh, for the MDA and it's actually got a good amount of thickness to it. Like I would say that that thickness is uh, it's pretty close to a one and a half mil thickness. 
Now, I don't have the calipers. Uh, actually, <laughs> I see it on my wife's desk. Yeah. All right, so let's check it out. Okay, if it'll actually maintain focus. You can do it. No. All right, so it is over one mil, but it's under one and a half mil. Uh, so it's, you know what, it's okay. It's reasonable thickness, it's nothing crazy, but it's, it's definitely not thin. Uh, so, I mean, that one is, is pretty much one and a half on that wall. So, you know, you can see the sprue marks on the corner, but it's okay. No issues there, and we should be able to pop that off. Right, and we can see there's the hot swap, there's the RGB, there's some kind of foam layer in between as well. So it is interesting that the uh, foam layer has an alternative. No, it's not the alternative, it's just for five pin. So you can have uh, five pin PCB mount switches as well because that foam layer actually accounts for it. So that's cool. Uh, I don't see any uh, signs of shrapnel. So, have to forgive me on that one. Uh, let's, let's carefully put that back in and snap. All right, now let's see if I can get the, the enter key up so we can have a look at these stabilizers. Okay, so they're just pretty standard OEM type of uh, plate mount inserted stabilizers. They definitely are factory lube. There is a large amount uh, of white stuff that is on the top left. You can kind of just see it. There's that lumpy goopy stuff on the left stabilizer wire. Yeah, so that's, that's factory looped. And I would expect that the space bar is going to be similar. What I will do, actually, if I can, is I'm going to check the stabilizer no okay so there is there is foam pre-filled into the gap where the stabilizer wire is uh, and that's very common in a lot of these boards now but I was curious to see if they had actually put anything on the inside of the space bar like a foam or an insert which they haven't uh, a lot of the community is doing this because it reduces the hollow sound of the space bar so I guess it's just really a matter of time before we start to see where OEMs might do similar because having a piece of that foam cut to fit in there to be you know cut custom cut mass manufactured to fit in there is not really that big of a stretch at least I don't think so okay right now that's Let's plug it in. Let's do a type on it and see how it feels and how it sounds. So there's the USB-C. Uh, let's just undo it a little bit. Come on. Okay. So I've got a bit of a green light that's pulsing there, which means it's probably charging. Uh, and then if I change it to the other side, maybe let's just have a quick reference to the manual, hey? All right. The battery on can be charged to wide regardless of the current switch mode. Okay, so that's doesn't really help me because there's no picture on on off and the switch also has no labels on here there is there's is nothing there to indicate which way is on or off for wireless so what I will do is I'll open notepad uh, and see if that is not doing anything that is seated all the way in so let's go to the other position and also nothing. 
the, the battery light indicator is on, but uh, I'm I'm not actually getting any signal. All right, let's take that out. Let's turn it around and plug it all the way in. Okay, what am I? <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Let's just change that over. It, it still doesn't like it. Okay, I'm going to change to another uh, USB port. All right, so I've still got flashing lights. It's still not doing anything. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated with this because it shouldn't be that hard. I just, it, I mean, it's all the way in. Um, I am going to get up and try and plug it directly into the back of my computer. Gonna have to bump my microphone a bit. Sorry about that. Okay, so now that is plugged directly into the back of my box. Uh, Still nothing on that switch position. <clears throat> and still nothing on that switch position. Wow. Okay. Um, seriously? What is what is going on? All right. Maybe I have no choice but to use the dongle. I can tell you that's uh, it's very disappointing if if I have to use the dongle. Okay, so my computer's whoa, right? So the dongle is in, um, and now it's registering with the dongle. So if I do that, that turns it off. So we know that now it is. It should be in wired mode. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now it works. So that's a learning lesson. Uh, I know that the, the wireless dongle, this 2.4 gigahertz dongle works. So that's, that's good. I'm gonna put that back so I don't lose it. But if you decide to purchase this keyboard uh, just be aware that first time use, you need to plug it into the wireless before the wired will work. Why did they decide it that way? No. It doesn't work now, now that I've unplugged the dongle. Who designed this? USB wide plus 2.4 wireless plus 5.0 Bluetooth. Okay, I'm going to unplug this and now it doesn't work. Right? So that's unplugged now. And then I'm going to turn this on. And now it works. Now, I'm going to turn it back off. So it's wireless mode off. It doesn't work. The, the wireless adapter is still plugged in. I'm going to plug the cable in. And now it does work. But then I'm going to take the wireless adapter out. 
And it doesn't work. This is this is a fail. Like Hey Jazz, if I need to install your software to make this keyboard work. I mean, if the battery charging is part of the reason that I can't run on a cabled mode, this keyboard is a fail. Right now, regardless of everything else that's been positive and I like about this, this gets a fat zero. If I cannot plug this in straight to my box without having this plugged in. Now, your manual does not talk at all about this. It said wired mode connection function tab. Okay, so I need to actually switch it. So it tells you here that wired mode is actually the third mode. Like you have to manually switch it function tab switches to wide mode. Wow. Almost failed you on this. Function tab. Right. Now, yes, it's on me that I didn't read the manual, but I shouldn't have to. By default, your product should be functional, plugged in by wire without a dongle. Anyway, still cranky about that. Not very happy. Design-wise, that's a flaw. Points lost. All right. Now that we're functional, everything still works. All right. So we've got the light mode. I'm going to go function pipe. Uh, let's just turn the light off. Let's turn the room off. Okay, it's not super bright, uh, at least with the top on it. Of course, if we take the top of it, it's probably going to uh, show a bit more. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's okay. It's not super duper bright. It's it's a reasonable amount of color there. But let's just uh, pop that back on and breathing mode, pulsing modes. Probably, yeah, some kind of, you know, uh, follow the key mode, explosion modes, row, raindrops, uh, just constant other chaos type of stuff, uh, cascades, all right, wave mode, snake type of spiral things, uh, waterfall type of mode. All right, you kind of get the gist. There's a lot of RGB modes that uh, will make you enjoy the fact that you have vision in color, if that's your thing. I might sound a little bit terse at the moment, but uh, that's because I'm still really cranky about the wide mode. It shouldn't be that hard. Like, it's a keyboard. Plug it in. Make it work. I shouldn't be having to look through and look past how to turn on Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth mode to get to wide mode. That's just a really weird choice. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's go to monkey type, um, and let's just do a quick 30 second type of sound test. So I've got, here's a microphone I prepared earlier. Uh, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> oh, my microphone is falling down. Why is my microphone falling down? Okay, I need to tighten this a bit more. Okay, so what I'm going to do now uh, is I am going to switch over the inputs from the ribbon microphone to the calibration microphone. So what you should hear now is just what is coming through the calibration microphone. That's probably a little bit on the high side. 
Okay, so we're just going to do a little bit of monkey type and see how we go. Okay, so while I've got that there, let's just do uh, spacebar, enters, and alike. Back to Notepad. So we're back to the Ruben microphone now, and let's just move that out of the way for now. Okay, I think it sounds okay. It's a little bit thin. Uh, the keycaps, they're a good thickness, but there's a lot of hard sounds to it. It's not super deep, it's also not really super hollow, uh, but for me I guess in, in my sort of everyday typing life I use clickies, so there's definitely a lot different in terms of the sound profile. It's not too bad, I think it would be fine within an office environment to be honest. Uh, I would probably add some o-rings on it to help with that bottom out sound to just cushion it a bit and round it out. Uh, depending on how hard you type how fast you type, whether it's going to upset coworkers or uh, the alike, you know. So, sound profile, I think it's okay. Uh, it's it's not too annoying, and it doesn't feel bad at all. The MDA keycaps profile is really nice to type on. It's really simple. Um, it, as weird as it is, that flatness and and zero sort of change in that profile of sorts is reminiscent almost like say uh, really cheap thin keyboards like the $8 Dell rubber dome type of things or laptop chiclet keyboards so you know if you're going from those to this it's probably an easier transition compared to if you're trying to type on sculpted SA which can be quite challenging uh, you know goods and bads about this overall is I do like it. Uh, I am getting over the fact that it, my annoyance around the wide mode for sure. Uh, I think for the price for a hundred bucks for a TKO, you know, it's actually pretty decent value. It's got good weight to it. You know, it's got good heft. It doesn't really move around. The rubber feet are definitely working. It has a couple of modes where you can, I suppose, you know, be comfortable in the office and then. I don't know if you want to party on the weekends, you could take the cover off and, and add a bit of flair to it, right? Uh, and have that light shine through. I'm assuming you should be able to turn off the, the RGB with this so that, uh, you know, you can actually take this to the office if necessary and, uh, you know, blend in, right? So it just looks like a nice keyboard. Uh, and it doesn't scream gamer. The font definitely doesn't scream gamer. It's a really simple, nice, clean color layout too. A little bit of contrast to it. Uh, and of course, you can always change that for your own keycaps afterwards. As well as if being a hot swap keyboard, you can you know, change out the switches too. Overall, I would be pretty happy to give this, you know, seven and a half to eight push, I think. Um, it definitely still lost the point because of just bad choices around the design component of having wide mode not being a default that you have to actually cycle and switch to it. Why is that? I don't know. Uh, I do like that it has the recess for the dongle, but I would prefer it to be somewhere else where it's not going to collect dust 
and other things. Because if you have these feet down, right, and you're on an environment, and you're not on a desk mat, and you're moving this around potentially, like it is asking to actually scrub dust and dirt into the actual opening there of the USB-A on the dongle. Uh, that's just, you know, my thoughts around that. Okay, um, I think that pretty much covers it. I think it's it's good value. If you're looking for a 10 keyless, uh, it's something to think about, something to check out. The battery, 2,500 milliamps. I don't know what that battery life is gonna be like because I don't normally run wireless. I don't use wireless keyboards, uh, especially for work. I, I have to run um, wide because they don't let us use wireless for work. Uh, at home, I have no need for wireless. So, you know, it's something that I don't really ever test, so I don't know what kind of lifespan that's gonna get. And I don't use RGB, so your, your mileage is gonna vary as well with how much lighting and how bright you're using it and so on and so forth. Um, stiffness, you know, like with that steel plate and the heft in there, I didn't feel any flex at all in my 30 seconds of typing. Now my typing, um, you know, wasn't exactly slow, so I just show you what my end result there was. Ooh. You know, 95 words per minute. Like it's not super fast, but it's it's quite a reasonable speed, right? And with that speed on these 45 gram linears, I wasn't experiencing, uh, you know, any flex on that at all. Right. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can check it out for yourself on uh, What Geeks website. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, what Geek also told me at the time when they asked me if I could review this um, after I received it was that uh, my code from previous Don 10 is actually uh, a ongoing code. So you can always use it at any point in time is what I'm led to believe. So it doesn't matter if it's for this keyboard, for any accessories or other keyboards, other products on their website. If you want a quick 10% off, I don't know if it stacks with other things, just chuck in Don 10 and, and see what you get, right? Um, yeah. So thanks very much for checking out this keyboard. I do want to say thank you to WhatGeek for sending me this, whether, uh, you know, being part of the 25 or not. Um, and of course, running that really cool $1 sale. So I'll check out that uh, cold keyboard cable uh, very, very shortly. All right. Uh, you know the drill, subscribe, bell, like, all that kind of stuff, comment below. Uh, and yeah, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And of course, until next time, happy clacking.